Hello everyone. So in this video, we will be starting with a new series where I will be showing you the most important functions in PyTorch and also uh, showing you how to implement it. So let's take an example of what I'm trying to say. So for example, there is a function in torch.nn, so which is called the cross entropy loss. So what this does is basically it figures out, it tries to calculate the, uh, as it says, cross entropy loss in multi-class classification, basically. So my job will be to explain this particular loss function, this particular function to you, um, along with its theory. I'll also be going deep into the parameters and uh, what these parameters mean and how to use them. As I said, I'll be going through the theory and at the same time, uh, I'll also be going through the examples that is um, not be, not the ones that is here, but uh, the ones that we use and what we can implement. Okay, so for that, we need to first understand the main, the most important submodule of Torch, the PyTorch that is Torch.nn. Okay, so this is basically that uh, what we use Torch for that is nn stands for neural network so this is how we implement neural networks in pytorch so how is this torch.nn divided so basically you can see these are these are the basic building blocks for graphs so basically computational graph is what it is trying to say but we can say these are the basic building blocks of the neural network so as you can see over here there are many types of uh, neural networks there are convolution layers then there are other submodules as well uh, non-linear activations, linear activations, no normalization layers, uh, recurrent layers. So if you see, you know, you can see over here what, what I'm showing. You can see that the torch.nn, which is the higher module, is subdivided into many sub-modules, okay? So convolutional module, which is used for uh, creating convolutional neural networks. There is linear layer, which a linear module that is used to create linear uh, simple neural networks. Then there is recurrent, which is used to create uh, RNNs and LSTMs and all that. There is transformer module, which is used for creating the transformers. And, and there are other sub-modules that are not neural networks, but are useful like loss functions. Then there is normalization layer, there is drop, drop out so basically the neural network whatever the things that are used in creating a neural network and making the neural network run is over here now one more important thing that i want to mention here is we will not be going through entire pytorch okay so generally speaking we only use five to ten percent so five to ten percent of pytorch these are the only this 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 i would say even ten percent is more of a you know overestimate but I would say 5 to 10% of PyTorch is what we use and that is only what I'm going to cover. I'm not going to cover the entire PyTorch because you know, it will become just impossible then. So let's see, as I said, these are divided into sub-modules. So try, let's try to see these sub-modules in brief and then I'll explain um, in the further videos, we'll be getting into deep and try to understand most of the functions, okay? So first one is the container. You can see the containers. Containers in here, I will be explaining to you. What I'll be explaining, I also tell. I also tell you. So uh, module, which is basically the base class. You can see over here the base class of all neural networks. We, whenever you implement a neural network, we will use it. Okay. When we, we we are creating any model, we will be using this. Okay. Sequential is basically used for um, you know uh, let's say clubbing um, many. Uh, layers or yeah clubbing many layers into one which will be used sequentially okay so a sequential container we will uh, we will see an example and then we'll understand better module list is like just like, like a normal python list but it holds as it says holds sub modules in a list so uh, let's say you can have convolutional layers in a list and then append to it linear layers basically it's uh, not that difficult when we'll see an example we'll understand okay um i, I will not be going into model module dict I think I'll be going into parameter list as well. So these are the three things I'll be basically or four things I'll be basically covering, covering here. Okay. I don't think there is anything more. Yeah. Hooks is something I'll be making another video because it's kind of involved and it's uh, more of a upper, ad, upper intermediate to advanced topic. After that, we have the convolution layers. So this is how you make the convolution uh, convolution CNN, so as, as we say, convolution neural networks. Uh, I have used a convolution in 1D, NNCon 1D. Mostly what we use is NNCon 2D. This is where your uh, images and all that is done. So we will use NNCon 2D. Uh, 3D, I haven't used so much. 
uh, then there is also the inverse of that so basically when you use con 2d the size of the images gradually reduce so in order to counteract that let's say for example in a unit you will have a nn dot con transpose 2d now this is not a direct inverse there are uh, nuances to it but what i'm going to say is that um, we are going to use this in our own applications okay con again transpose 3d same thing uh, lazy con i haven't used it so much um, unfold fold we haven't used it so much okay pooling layers again very very important in every convolution neural network you will be using the nn max pool 2d because this is the most important uh, feature let's say or one of the most important features of the convolution neural network uh, sometimes i think i have also used nn dot max and pool but not a lot so it says a partial inverse of max pool 2d whatever uh, again average pool is also important so just like max pooling is uh, it figures out the maximum element in a given patch average basically calculates the average of the given patch we will be seeing this in detail fractional i haven't used and all this i haven't used so uh, i'll only be explaining things that i have used obviously uh, but i can rest assure you most of these are not are not you'll not be using them okay here again non linear activation functions so these are divided into two groups in pytorch so here what i'm going to concentrate on is uh, nn dot leaky relu i think i have also used nn dot sigmoid in a previous uh, project as far as i can remember we will be using nn dot multi head attention but i am not really sure why they have put it under uh, uh, activation functions nn dot relu very very very, very important um, after that uh, yes nn dot gelu again very very important we will be using this as well then nn dot sigmoid uh, gelu is something that uh, doesn't really come up often but i have seen this um, work really nicely sigmoid whenever you are doing binary class classification very very important i think there is a tan h yes there is also tan h over here so generally when you are using an rnn you use tan h um, you can use that also after that you can go to the next set of functions non linear activation functions here without a doubt for multi class classifications nn dot softmax uh, log softmax is also sometimes it has been used i have seen um after that what we are going to do is um we'll go directly to the normalization layers and here the most important one is nn dot batch norm 2d now this is generally done in order to remove the covariate shift in the data i'll explain what that means um basically this can also be used to reduce the number of parameters because with this you can uh, put um, uh, what to say that um, bias equal to i'm sorry bias equal to false which reduces our number of parameters drastically here again batch uh, lazy batch i don't really use so much because i think lazy calculations are a little bit different uh, i haven't used then after that we will be getting into the recurrent layers this is where your rnns and lstms and grus these are the most important these three out of that i would say the first two are the most important this one sheldon i have used but not that uh, useful okay so lstms generally for your text and all that we will be using this after that what we will be doing is transformer layers very important so this nn dot transformer you can say is basically the transformer architecture along with encoder decoder everything is has been given to you so i won't be using this directly but again uh, if you want to just quickly apply a transformer you can do that as well you can have nn dot transformer encoder and Uh, so basically this is a stack of uh, here yeah, it is written stack of n encoder layers okay so you will have uh, encoder layer is over here when you stack some of them let's say n encoder layers you get a the entire encoder okay same thing for the decoder here you have stack of n decoder layers and each layer can be used from here okay so this is from your uh, attention modules after that the most important and the simplest one is the linear layers where we will be using nn dot linear this is basically a matrix that we use for simple neural network very very important uh, i think the next video is going to be this only then you have the dropout layers and here too we are going to use the first function nn dot dropout we'll specify a probability p uh, this is going to basically reduce our overfitting this is the only one that i used from here okay then there are sparse layers and the most important one here is nn dot embedding which is basically used in uh, uh, text based yes it, which is used in text uh, uh, text based problems in deep learning so basically it converts a let's say a token word whatever 
to uh, uh, let's say an important n dimensional vector that has more information than generally speaking it's uh, one hot encoding counterpart after that you also have the distance functions don't really use that very often but n and dot cosine similarity we know what it means and uh, n and dot pairwise distance i think also can be useful at times then we have the loss function n and n, n and dot l1 loss that is the mean absolute error mae so basically it uh, it finds the absolute error okay then msc l1 loss yes as I know, this is called the l2 loss okay uh, this is the squared version of the loss in the earlier part uh, as i have shown in the example earlier i had shown in the example this is the cross entropy loss and um, this is used for multi class classification i have also used once nn l loss negative log likelihood loss after that uh, bze loss very useful for binary classifications after that this is also useful i think this one is a little bit more stable i'll have to recheck it uh, after that i don't use hinge loss so much smooth l1 i think this is it from here yes so okay yeah we are done with that so basically there are other functions as well we will not be using that so vision layers I haven't used it shuffle I haven't used it this is for multi uh, GPU uh, I had used it in one pro uh, one pro problem I remember distributed learning uh, yes clip norm and all these these are used for your clipping for uh, fighting the um, exploding gradient problem uh, then there are other functions as well so as I said only 5 to 10 percent is required you know PyTorch is a very big, it's a huge library. I don't know what Troon means, but I think it seems like an uh, interesting thing. I'll be seeing it, what it is. Parameterizations, um, don't use that much. Uh, NN dot, yes, this one, I think NN uh, utils, RNN dot pad pack sequence. This is used when you have variable, variable length sequences. I have used it earlier and I'll be showing what, what that means. NN dot flatten I think you can also use torch dot flatten if um, we'll have to see if this is something else then we'll have to quantization not that advanced right now we don't do that but uh, if it is required we will do it so this was a brief overview of what we are going to do there are a lot of functions so basically what I want you to do is if you do not understand any of the function that is in PyTorch you don't have to worry you just have to come to my channel and then search it most probably you know as i'll be uploading whatever function and parameters and how to use it all these questions will be answered in the videos so i hope you like the video thank you very much and bye